before stepping out from this splendid park, which was largely a roost for winos until the nearby liquor store went belly up from failure to properly monitor the ages of booze purchasers. Now that that's been taken out, the hapless winos have had to move to another neighborhood closer to the packy. But you can see this shit. This is very popular. They're weird little rent-a-bicycles that look like they could take a beating. And they're willing to crunch this whole little set of benches and built-in features and amenities in order <coughs> to service the demand for rent-a-bikes. traverse the other arc of this triangle neighborhood. Better look up Old Beacon Street. And generally the neighborhood is crappy overpriced restaurants and pickup joints. There's only a few practical things here, and, but they are quite good. You have the bank, which I'm quite fond of. And a coffee shop. Further down, there's Alvaro's Hardware Store. Here down Springfield Street, you have Olay, formerly the Springfield Street Saloon. And that's kind of a dinner clip joint. It's little lunch cart counterpart across the street. Olecito is a kind of a place to get very well made and reasonably priced burritos and quesadillas and such. 1369 Coffee House was once a jazz bar. Frank Wright, among others, performed here. Dewey Redmond. Various people. I was here with Bert and Nix from Ornette Coleman's band a few years ago, reminding him of how he played there once. But now it's been utterly transformed and is primarily extremely self absorbed people staring at laptops while guzzling overpriced caffeinated milk beverages. conspicuous display status things. Oh, and here we have someone smashed a bottle of some kind. There's a little toy shop and the back side of the grotesque deli. This place, the Druid, is actually one of the better simple pubs to go get food and such. Unpretentious, owned by people who are actually from Ireland. And this is a ghastly little rent-a-performance space that competes with the dump I live in. If you're a musician and you want to use this place, it's going to run you about 120 bucks a night last time I heard, unless you're a friend of the owners. And 
so it's out of reach for most. <laughs> the dump I belong to rents for about fifty bucks if you're a regular. Ah, this little place is closing. How sad. It's going out of business. It's never very well run, kind of run down, but you could find cool stuff in here. And this is really the heart and soul of practical Inman Square. Inman Square hardware. And good old Alvaro and his son Paul and his charming daughter whose name escapes me. But this is probably the consummate old school hardware store where you can find nearly anything. And then, once again, not a lot of anything else that's particularly noteworthy. Just overpriced restaurants and pickup dumps. Here's a little block of mostly practical things. In the post office on the corner. The vintage clothing peddler Una evidently has a outpost here. And this refrigeration place has now become a used bookstore. They just haven't bothered to take the sign down. It's that special Massachusetts decrepitude we've come to know and love. Now this block has another little bodega that really doesn't have any fresh fruit or vegetables. It's mostly another place to get scratch tickets and chump tax accoutrements. Good old Sandy's. And the real hellacious yuppie pickup joint foofy epicenter would be along here. We have this overpriced restaurant next to Bukowski in Inman Square. There's another Bukowski over in Boston for the now aging Gen X hipster contingent who made a icon of Bukowski, evidently, <laughs> to which he must be rolling over in his grave. Then we have the spiffied up old dump with the San Francisco style paint job. Dixie Barbecue, where they say, Eat barbecue here and die happy. Yeah, whatever. And the highly touted East Coast Grill. All of these little businesses are owned by the same gaggle of goons. Can't you tell by the <laughs> obdurate spiffiness of it all?